Ladies and gentlemen, always amazing to have an old friend on the show, especially when he has new music. Big Poo is on real late. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's good, man? Hey, man, working, man. Trying to, try to be a renaissance man. You got a new album, first of all. New album, RPM, with uh, produced by Focus, dot, dot, dot. I got to be very specific. He, he's very particular about the dot, dot, dot? No, I have to be particular because it's like three other Focuses. <laughs> <laughs> okay, got it, got it. So you got to make sure you get your dots in. Definitely. People speak you very highly of this album. I will hope so, man. I I think this is probably my best work. Um, I know a lot of people say that, but... It's, you're obligated at a certain point to always say it's your best yeah, work. Yeah, yeah, I, I took my time with this one, like, for real. Like, not... Uh, I took a month or two-month time. I took about a year and a half's time to really make sure I did this one right. And what else were you doing during that year and a half time? Managing. That was, that's was that been my big thing, man. Uh, I manage uh, three artists. My, my guy Luke from Charlotte um, with Dreamville and Interscope. And yeah. I got a singer-songwriter, Black Soul. Um, he actually co-wrote uh, Mansa Musa on Anderson Pack's new album. Wow. He wrote like a hook on Macklemore's last album. And then uh, Praise, the producer that has the project with Torrey. Uh, All Praises Do. Which I've been playing some joints off there too. It's really dope. Yeah. How did the... I mean, the management thing is sort of a no-brainer because... And if you, if you look around music, you will find often former artists mm -hmm. who now manage because right. they learned a lot. Uh, maybe it didn't go exactly how they wanted, but they had tricks of the trade. It's not as often, though, that you find someone who's managing and still making music. It's a, it's a fine line. Right. Um, it's I, I, I struggled. That's been part of the layoff. Like I was struggling with that balance, trying to figure out really how to do both and not feel like I'm trying to take top priority over my artists because they're supposed to be the top priority. So, um, But, you know, I had conversations with them about it, and I'm a creative. And once I, once I got going, I got going. So we just had the conversations. I still put them first, prioritize them, but I had to, had to get, this, get this work off. Do you, uh, what do you enjoy about managing? Um, probably the big... It, not necessarily redoing some of the things I've done, like actually knowing what to do now. I think it's helping these guys really not just visualize but achieve some of their goals. I think that's probably the thing I like the most about managing. Because you're able to say, N trust me, I right. did this. It's like it's like as a big brother, I don't know if you have any siblings younger. Big brother? How ironic. Keep going. <laughs> we'll get back to that. As a big brother, you know... You, you you are able to say, listen, I did this and I messed up. I got in trouble. You do this the opposite way and you won't get in trouble. And that's and it's sort of like the same type of parallel. It was like, listen, I came in, I did X, Y, and Z. X only worked, Y and Z didn't. This is why it didn't work. Let's try to do it the opposite way and see how it pans out. And I, it's it's more of that effect, you know, plus along the lines of. I actually know what I'm doing most of the time. So. Right, and you're a smart guy. You can, <laughs> what What's frustrating about it? What What part of managing is like? Okay, I got the perfect parallel for this. It's like players, Magic Johnson, when he tried to coach, he couldn't do it mm -mm. because you don't affect the game the same. So it's like you can point some out, oh, yo, you should do this or do this like this, but at the end of the day, it's not your call. you only advising, giving the pros and the cons. So... It's that. It's like you can't really affect the change as much as you used to be able to. But ironically, when you were doing it, you didn't have the wisdom that you have now. Exactly. So, is so that, now you see the court better, but you're not the one with the ball. You're not the one with the ball. You're on the sideline like, oh, you missed that pass. Come on. He was right there. Right. But, you know, that's so that's that's probably the most frustrating thing about it. Um, what When you look back at the, your career, are there any, like, main – we all have things in our life, I think, where we, we come back to and think, um, this shouldn't have gone this way. Uh, this, you know, I know that, like, it, it's almost a given in your mind, mm -hmm. the situations that could have played out better. Right. What are the things that, like, when you come back to it, and, and you've always had a nice career, rap's always made your life. Like, you've lived as a rapper now for a very long time. Right. It's done quite well for you. But we also all know that um, the, the ceiling for little brother was not reached. No. Right? So when you look back at those times, what are the things you kind of circle back to of like, ah, this should have played out differently? Um, Probably, I just, it's, it's, it's kind of, it's, it's a weird thing. It's like, 
the little brother era, that's the thing that I wish would have played out differently. But it's it's one of the things we were ahead of the curve slightly. You were. So it's like whoever is ahead of the curve don't get the benefits of the curve, obviously. And that's kind of where we were. We were slightly ahead of the curve. So we didn't get none of the benefits a lot of guys that came after us ended up getting, even though we were helping kick that door down for guys after us to do, you know, some of the things that they've been doing. And I think that's probably the 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 biggest thing is, you know, it was cool being in, ahead of the curve when you was doing it, but then when you look back, you're like, man, that it was cool, but it wasn't cool. Because you don't even – you. You don't get the recognition sometimes either. It's just like, hey, you were the you were the front line soldier. Yeah, yeah. you I'm... sacrificed so they could shine. Like, yeah, and what is the main thing? You guys think you you just predated the internet era. You were caught right between like vinyl and CDs, right? And internet. Yeah. Like real internet, iTunes. Yeah, really like being... there, there was no even when we dropped the minstrel, there was no streaming. It was you could download. But it, the streaming thing wasn't the boom. Min, so Minstrel Show, iTunes existed. It did exist. But that still probably wasn't it's, primary it, at no, all. It's not like it is. Like, social media wasn't. We were message boards. Message, it's true. You know? Big message boards. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The yeah. lawn. Which moved slower than... <laughs> and, was, and, was, and was so niche. Very I mean, nice. honestly, it's practically the difference between online dating back then and now. Exactly. You were looking at a pool of people that was really small. Yeah. And now it's Tinder. If you're single and adult, you're on Tinder. You're on one of those sites. Right. Whereas if you're like us and you've been married for a long time, you don't even know how to use it. You're like, you missed it completely. You, you just like, I, I remember AOL, you know. Acts and age, sex and location. Yep. That's, that's what I remember. Like, and and, and I remember it's that. a different world completely. Different world. So musically it's the exact same thing. Like that was you guys were still full on CDs and vinyl. Still full on, man. Like we never it never we 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 were caught in that era. I always said we were like um we got caught between the uh like the raucous and the soul Koreans and then the new acts. Like we got caught in the middle of that. Yep. Like we were on the island by ourselves and it was like hey yeah y'all guys like us but we can't get to that island we, we too far right we're back hey, here you guys like us we can't get to that island either and that's kind of how our little brother was man and i mean that's 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 the thing that you it's but it's almost like you wish you could redo it but then you be like nah i'm glad i can't because a lot of the things that has happened to me and for and like for me wouldn't have happened without Little Brother going down the way it did. So you guys did end up on the same stage together a while ago. Yeah, that was the first time since 2005. All three of us. 2005? Yeah, like... All uh, three of you guys? All three of us. Like, uh, me and Tay, last time we were on stage, uh, 2010. But the last time all three of us, yeah, that was probably about 2005. And so what was the situation? Take us through it. Um. Well, first, man, I just... It, it wasn't a big plan. Like, a lot of people... Hey, oh man, okay, so this is happening. It's like, nah, literally, I was at home in Charlotte, North Carolina. Mm -hmm. Durham, North Carolina is two hours and 15 minutes from my house. Okay. North. I met home. I get a call. I see his Tay. I said, I'm going to call him back. I just sent him the voicemail. He calls me right back. Pick up. Yo, give me a minute. No, 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 no. It's only going to take a minute. I got a knife on the phone. Okay. Like, cause we hadn't discussed. at that point. At that point, when was the last time you'd spoken to each of them? Uh, probably recently. Like, I mean, that that we had actually been in all been in communication with each other for the past me and Tay at least the past two and a half three years, mm -hmm. and then me and Ninth since 2014 maybe. Got it, okay. So we we were building the brotherhood bond back. Like it wasn't even about music. Like. Just getting to talking. Yeah, we would casually ask what the other person was working on, but it wasn't a big, oh, let's get back and do whoop de whoop So when I got the call, I was just like, okay, what's going on? And Tay presented. He was like, yeah, Royce didn't make his flight. Uh, the guy, him and Ninth, knew the promoter. He was like, he called me. It was like uh, he wanted a Tay solo set. And I was, Tay was like, I was just thinking, hey, this the iconic stadium, one of our iconic pictures. It's in Durham. Perfect timing if it can work out. So I was like, he was like, can you make it? I was like, what time do I got to be there and how much we getting? And that's pretty much was it. I was in my car probably 20 minutes later. 
Hayden to Durham. And how long a set did you guys do? I think it was like 25 minutes. And how did it feel? It felt weird at first, but then it was just like riding the bike. Like once we really got started, like walking out there, the weirdness happened pre-show, walking onto the stage. But once we got rolling, it was just like we do this all the time. And, but yet you hadn't. But yet we had Like, you're talking about like 13 years, 12, 13 yeah, years. But, it's, but it was just, you know, at least for me and Tay, because we had done so many shows, like the chemistry is still there. Mm -hmm. like, I mean, it was some misses of cues and things of that nature. But for the most part, the chemistry, so you it, it just automatically snapped back into your head. Okay, on this song, we used to do this like this. And it just come back. But, but that was it. It was just a one-off. It was a one-off, man. It, I mean, it forced us to begin to have conversations there were none prior it just forced us to start conversations but even then it's just like i don't know what we're gonna do man it's it's three different people with a whole bunch of stuff going on and so. three very different lives very different lives at this point so it's like figure it out and how far apart does everybody live well i live the furthest because i'm in a different city but i think knife and tay probably live 15 20 minutes apart right but I live a good from Tay. I live almost three hours. Got it. South. <laughs> yeah. Um, and and what do you have anything else on the horizon? You got besides the new project? Um, started a little distribution hub, man. Uh, hmm. Common Sense Media Group. Um, I can't manage everybody. Don't have the time. But it's a lot of people that want to come to me for advice, mentorship, whatever. They ask me about resources. So I said, hey, let me. I'm put this together and. You know, I can help you with, assist you with some of them things. And it's mostly for people really trying to get started and get started the right way and get headed the right way. And they might not need management. They just want the advice, the resources or whatever. So um, me and a couple couple of my guys, we started that up just to help people out. Um, music, uh, like media, like videos, uh, shorts, you know, whatever. Just trying to help people out and get stuff into the right lane and the right way and you know, once they get started and they keep get rolling, they can move on to something else, or they can stay and we can do it up together. But you know, it, that's just my way of because I can't, like I said, I can't manage everybody. I don't have the time. This was a way for me to still be involved and to help people out that wanted me to be involved without being fully involved. Does it ever bug you out that right now we are in the midst of twenty five years since nineteen ninety three? <laughs> music, like from a music standpoint, like last, like last month, November, Snoop, Tribe, Wu Tang, yeah, twenty five years. It's bugged out because I can remember. I just had my twentieth high school reunion mm -hmm. that I didn't go to, <laughs> but I just had that. So just I, I went last year. You didn't miss much. It's weird. All all of that it was just like, oh man, like. Even when the albums popped up, like you, you automatically remember where you were when when the albums came out, what you were doing. Like I told my Snoop story, my doggy style, like when I got that album, um, that was the first C D I ever owned in life. My mom bought it for me. But she was only used to hearing the radio edit of What's My Name. Oh uh, no. So when I went to play it, this was not the radio edit. And she, because she was between that and the Tevin Campbell CD. I'm ready. If that was the one, yeah. It was between that and her boyfriend was like, don't get him that Tevin Campbell CD. And I was like, man, I don't like you, but I like you right now. <laughs> like, give me the Snoop Dogg. Yeah, yeah, give me the Snoop. So that was the first CD I ever owned. And then the second part of that story is somebody in college swapped out CDs because the original pressing had the, the G's up, holes down. Mm -hmm. The repress did not. They had the repress. I had the original press. They swapped my CDs out. Damn. Never saw them again. That was it. Never saw them again. You, um, you know, uh, Dell, No Need for Alarm, came out the same day as Snoop, too. Jesus. Um, I was just talking to um, Festo about Dell the other day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I, you know, yeah, everyone remembers Snoop Dogg's album was one of those albums that you really remember. See, it's, it, and this is the an important difference. It's a very tough argument. Ooh, this would be a fun conversation if you had time and depth um, between what album's more important, Doggy Style or Enter the Wu-Tang, because they're both so important. But the, the, one thing that is clear, to me at least, is that 
the doggy style release was a much bigger deal because Definitely. Snoop was so anticipated. The Wu Tang album crept. It crept on you. Like I, I only knew about it because I had a friend who was from Brooklyn who claimed he was part of Wu Tang. God, it, this is amazing. Did he have a hoverboard also? No, he didn't. But he he was he'd be like, look in the credits. See, you see that Ned turtle or something like that. That's me. They talk about me, and I'm like. Are you sure? How would I know that to be real? Right, right, right. But, but I mean, it, it did creep up. But, yeah, Doggy, that was just everywhere. That was in your face. It was super anticipated. Yeah. You know, the Snoop story had unfolded very, all the way from deep cover. To he was on trial. And, yeah, that, it was. Him and Biggie are interesting in that regard. And Nas. Snoop, Biggie, and Nas are all interesting in the way that they were all hyped. Like, it, all of them were a big deal before the album came out. Yes, indeed. You know what I'm saying? Like, not everyone had... Hove wasn't like that. Hove was a he, he crept, creep. He crept up on you. You know, some of them were Wu-Tang, crept. They had a single. The it, bootleg record blew up. Then they moved... Like, everyone has a different path. Red Man, too. But, like, the Snoop, Nas, Biggie thing was... Each one of their releases, the album release was like... Yeah, it was, it was larger than life. Yeah, like that was the, those were the ones that you go to the store and the posters were everywhere. And Yeah, and, 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 it's, and it's unfortunate that you really can't get that now. Like, no, the same the experience doesn't yeah, exist it, that the way. The experience is totally different now. So, and, and just thinking back on them times, it's like the anticipation was just so real. It was like you was chomping at the bit to hear what each one of these releases because the artist was so hyped he was like I gotta hear the full release I right, what's this gonna be release. and then you're gonna sit and listen to the whole thing the all the whole way through thing, front to back side to side at all any different way you could think of you're gonna listen to the whole thing repeatedly and trying to dissect it and break it down every you know minuscule molecule whatever of the, <laughs> the album well right. speaking of which I hope you guys out there will do the same with RPM um, the new album from Big Poo and Focus, Focus dot, 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 dot. Yes, indeed. It's out right now. I'm going to play a couple joints from it right now. Pooh, always great seeing you, my Man, brother. Man, likewise. Uh, one of my favorite people. It's real late. Hot 97.